So it's two in the morning in the Kunsthistorische Museum. This might be a mistake. Where have you walked from? It's a cold night to be out. You wrapped up warm, but it's got colder. It's Advent Sunday. Vienna is full of lights. Music seeps out of cafes, out of restaurants, out of shops. You can't move for kitsch. Where have you come from? Which district in Vienna have you come from? I've crossed the Heldenplatz, crossed the Ring, skirted Maria Theresa, skirted all those cabins with their glue vine, walked up those nine shallow steps up to the entrance of this museum, gone to the left, gone through those wooden doors, up, through, and into this building. And it's all gold. It's another kind of Heldenplatz, yet more heroes wherever you look. Where do you turn when you come in? Do you go left? Do you go left into the Kunstkammer, that great run of extraordinary objects, a millennium of changing one thing into another? Do you go right into antiquity, go deep into one dream after another dream? after another? Or do you go on? Up this run of stairs, grander than the opera, grander than the Burgtheater, Vienna is competitive with its stairs. Don't look up, apotheosis above you. Go up these 84 stairs, we counted them this morning. Go up, turn left at Tasius and the Minotaur. Go up, turn right, turn right to Saal 8. And you come in, and there in a pool of light is Dürer's Kunstbuch. As you walk towards it, the floor creaks slightly, as if you are on a boat, as if you are actually at sea. And there in that pool of light is an image and some words. The image is above. The words are below. Look carefully at that image and read the words. Dürer writes, in 1525, during the night between Wednesday and Thursday after Whitsuntide, I had this vision in my sleep and saw how many great waters fell from heaven. When I awoke, my whole body trembled, and I could not recover for a long time. When I awoke and arose in the morning, I painted the above as I had seen it. May the Lord turn all things to the best. Gott wende alle Ding zum Besten and the image is of the end of the world. The image is of great waters, such waters 
that he had never seen. You feel your feet tremble, the ground tremble as those waters come towards you. You see one cloud and another. It's a landscape from childhood transmogrified. And you feel Dura as a man alone, a man seeing this and trembling, a man alone without control, without agency, without power to help what is happening and what is to come. What happens during the night? During the night, the walls come down. One thing becomes another. We are prey to transformation. And so near Dura, a coral becomes a head. A piece of wood becomes a crucifix. A mandrake root, Al Runa, becomes the figure of Christ. All these things change from one to another. We name it, we recognize it, we see the fear of transformation. What happens during the night? I hear voices in this museum. I hear Freud. What happens during the night? We have anxiety. No anxiety grips us. And we see what we fear. So near Dura, we have the devil in the glass. We have that powerful three-inch high piece of glass, which is what's left from an exorcism. We have the bizarre held close for protection because we know that the world is full of toxic poison. We hold the onyx fibula. We wear it to turn away the evil eye because we know that people wish us ill. And we see the bones of saints, the relics of precious people held carefully in silver mounts to keep them near us, keep us protected. What happens during the night? We are watched. We know we are watched. And so that great image of the old woman's eyes hangs near Dura, following us all the way around the museum. What happens during the night? We are out of control. We lose our agency. And so there is the shake box, that extraordinary object where creatures move and we cannot control them. We are out of control, and so we see fire starting, which we cannot put out. We see the corals, those extraordinary corals, and suddenly we realize that those corals are the flames of Medusa. Medusa's hair turned to stone underwater, and we see fear in coral and we see the crowd. During the night, we see what happens with the crowd. And here, I hear another voice. I hear Canetti. I hear another Viennese voice talking of what happens with crowds and power. And so in Zal Acht, behind me, I've hung Savaris, extraordinary, 
death of Orpheus, that beautiful painting you've walked past year after year, it's full of beauty, it's full of lyricism, but it's also the mob. It's Orpheus being taken apart by the crowd. And when I see that, I know the dates that matter in my walks round Vienna, my walks towards the Kunsthistorische Museum. And so I remember the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th of March, 1938. I remember my great grandparents. I remember the 9th and 10th of November, 1938. And I remember the sounds of Vienna on that night. And so in Saal 8 are two broken pieces of crystal near the devil in the glass, the exorcism, the crowd, that moment of power which is out of control. What happens during the night? What happens when you are alone? You hear voices. Sometimes you can't tune out those voices. Sometimes they are unwarranted voices. They are voices you do not wish to listen to. But sometimes you hear voices that speak to you and you tune into them and you hear them and they are very strong. So I hear Karl Kraus in the Kunsthistorische Museum. I hear him in The Last Days of Mankind. I hear him writing The Third Walpurgis Night, where he writes that the most improbable deeds reported here truly happened. The most improbable conversations are repeated here word for word, and the most glaring inventions are quotations. I hear Krauss in this museum. And in Saal 8, in this exhibition, we look again at Dürer. That great book will be closed. We will not see it again for another 30 years. And I think of Thomas Bernhardt in his novel on this extraordinary place, Old Masters, when he writes that in the Kunsthistorische Museum I am exposed. We are all exposed here. We are searched out. We are found wanting by the images on the walls, by the objects in front of us, by our encounters with place and time and space. But that is why we come here. That's why we return here. That's why we come here by ourselves. That's why we come here collectively. We come here because to be exposed during the night to those shadows is to take us to something real that we have to look at, we have to absorb, and we have to encounter. Now, as in every year, this place is full of voices. It's also full tonight of new stories, of cello music, of politics, of you, of coffee, of people in deck chairs. During the night, it's worth 
staying awake during the night. Thank you.